Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome. We'd love to see everyone popping in. We have an exciting topic for all of you today and to divine guest experts. Uh, as you are all flowing in, you know the drill, right? Hop in the chat and let us know where you are watching from today. Where are you? Are you at home? Are you cuddled under covers up in the mountains? Are you on the beach in Florida? Where are you? Let us know. Uh, we always love to check that out after um, after the the live is done so that we can kind of get a feel for that. Uh, some, some basic housekeeping up front. If you've attended one of these already, you know the drill here as well, which is when Molly and Heather start their conversation, I really want them to be in their flow. And so I'll be watching the chat for them while they are talking. And at the end of the session around... Ooh, 1145 to 1150, somewhere right in the middle there, we will, I'll, I'll come back on and we'll walk through the questions that you have. So make sure that you add the questions to the chat or you're writing them down so that when we do Q&A, uh, you can pop it in there at that point. But we will get to those questions for sure. We just want to make sure we get through their delicious content up front. Uh, I also want to talk about the Woman Up Academy. We launched this last year and <laughs> then the pandemic happened and we diverted our gaze from it, but we are, we are really working with California Association of Realtors to shine a light on those courses and that certification. So uh, I'll drop a link in as soon as we go live here so that all of you can check that out after the show today. Um, but really it's made up of a dozen, about a dozen amazing topics and instructors. Uh, and I was blessed to be asked to participate. I did one called Empowering You. And so I'm going to share with you uh, one of the sessions in that and kind of give you a teaser of it because it flows right into what Heather and Molly are going to talk about today. And that is all around defining your core values. And this, this conversation around core values is so important. I feel like I, at one point, I think about five years ago, I thought, can I, can I still talk about core values? <laughs> oh yes. Mm -hmm. Like for the rest of our lives, we should all be talking about what we value, how our decisions are aligned with those values, how our clients are aligned or at least at the very least honor and respect our values. And so I want to encourage all of you, if you've not taken uh, any of the Academy of courses to, to check that out, to check out those courses, the, the core values session really helps you go through the process of defining those words. And I'll also share with you a quick way for you to get a free core values exercise. Cause I know that's going to be woven in to the conversation as well today. Like how, what are your top five? What are your top in my world? 11, because those core values truly do help you make so many decisions. And in, in all of the courses and the keynotes that I've shared over the years, I always say there's three pillars that you need before you start doing anything, whether it's branding, marketing, uh, networking, client development, and that is understanding what those values are, what you're really truly passionate about and the communities that you love to serve, and ultimately how you can weave your personal purpose into all of your messaging so that it is truly authentically you and who you are, because we all know this. When we step into who we are, when we step into and align with our values, we shine. We become a beacon, a, a magnet, if you will, that attracts people and opportunities to us like no other words possibly ever could. So again, if you haven't checked out the Woman Up Academy, I'll drop the link in so that you can check that out later. Uh, However, let's hop into what we are going to talk about today. These two brilliant minds that are surrounding us today, um, Molly McKinley and Heather Elias are here with us. I'm going to let them introduce themselves, but what I want to share with all of you is these women have led conversations around branding and marketing and being truly intentional and focused on it for years. I have sat in the front row listening to these brilliant leaders. I, I, I mean, I've lost count. And so grab your journal, 
make sure you have an extra pen because what you are about to hear about this, the journey of intentional branding and marketing, you're going to fill pages and pages. All right, ladies, I'm going to get out of the way. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. And we are so, so truly grateful that you are here with us. I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> Thanks, Deborah. Thanks, Deb. You start start first. Introduce yourself. You want me to go first. Okay. Well, fair enough. Um, So for anyone that doesn't know me, I'm based in Northern Virginia, and I have been in the real estate industry since 2004. I got started as an agent when my uh, fourth child was about six weeks old. Uh, But my background prior to that was in journalism and public relations. So I kind of came into real estate with the idea of storytelling as being the base of uh, where my business could come from. So over the years that morphed into me working um, as uh, director of digital content and social strategy at the National Association of Realtors, and then back to uh, the brokerage roots at Century 21 Redwood running their marketing department. Um, and eventually branching off um, on my own to do marketing consulting work. So Molly and I have had the good fortune to be on stage together running the marketing track at Inman and collaborating to um, help different technology companies find their story and their voice. So I, if there was one topic that so like completely defined um, who I am as a professional, I think like intentional branding and marketing probably like sits at the middle of the bullseye. So yeah, I love fun that. To, to have a whole, a whole hour with you guys to talk about this. Yeah, this is so good. So the fun thing is, you know, you know, for everyone, like, and this is really apropos for this conversation is when Heather and I met, we walked into our meeting wearing the exact same outfit. So <laughs> we did <laughs> and this was back in the time where we had the same haircut, the same hair color and the exact same outfit. Yeah. And so we just knew that, okay, you know, we are cut from the same cloth and we actually are. Yeah. Um, I also have a background in public relations. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, one of the things, that, and again, Molly McKinley um, and where Heather and I sort of where we both um, had that synergistic, which is, you know, belief system, which is where the intentional marketing branding stems from, is this idea that it needs to be led, um, the human story and the heart needs to be, um, come, come forth and be first above everything else, right? Because at the, at the essence of who we are, um, that is that connective tissue. So, you know, my background is I started years and years ago, I was an art dealer and um, then was in high tech PR in um, San Francisco, um, Adobe. I worked with Adobe for many, many years um, and have then since built many, many brands and startups and have kind of found my, my pace um, with that startup world. I love, um, I, I just, I love, I love growing tech brands. So that's kind of um, my background. Um, now I am, um, uh, I ha- wear many hats. So I have a podcast <laughs> and um, Intentionalities is a brand, um, a tea company that we're building. And um, Heather and I collaborate together um, under the banner of Redtail Creative. And um, we get to work with tech companies. And I'm also the acting VP of brand at Rate My Agent. So that is lots of hats. And I think that's part of the conversation today too, right? Is that, um, you know, in a gig economy, um, you know, we get to show up as our whole selves, right? And our whole selves aren't um, just about uh, being a one trick pony. So one of the things I'd like to start with and then, um, we can go from there, Heather, and sort of weave mm-hmm. is sort of, yep. let's get the conversation started in terms of uh, just the framework, the container of what intentional marketing is so that we're all on the same page. So yep. I should also say that I'm a 500 hour yoga teacher. So for the last 15 years or so, um, I have been teaching um, yoga and meditation practices and techniques. Um, so a lot of um, this work sort of stems from um this connection of thinking um, 
I wish we could apply some of the yogic thinking into the business world so Mm -hmm. that we, um, you know, I'm not so sure. I don't know, understand why we have such a disconnect from our personal lives and our business lives. Right. So how do we marry those two ideas? Mm -hmm. So the definition of intentionality uh, or the, is it's a philosophy of being purposeful, right? So how do you do things with purpose on purpose? Right. And that is really the root of any of intent. Right. It is about doing something with purpose on purpose. Right. Now, branding versus marketing is a question that we get all the time. You know, like, what's the difference? Um, You know, branding is, uh, you know, essentially, um, you know, it takes place um, of it's, you know, the idea of branding is where you have the human face of the company and the emotion of what you're trying to accomplish and then how you apply that um, when the actual physical people are, are no longer um, able to, to be that, um, the face, if you will. And then finally, marketing is all of the series of conversations you have about that thing. So flipping to you, Heather, you know, yep. Connecting those dots a bit, a bit more. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, in, in real estate, especially whether you're an agent or a team lead or a broker, right? The, the idea of um, intentional, you are your brand, right? You are the face of, of your business. And especially at the individual agent level and at the team level too, you have to know what you stand for and what you're bringing to the table when you are meeting with clients, because you're trying to figure out how are you, what are you bringing to this that is different than, what's your differentiator? Like, who are you? What are you bringing to the table? Why does this matter to the consumer that you're in front of? And so if you don't have that figured out first, it's going to be really tough to, articulate your value proposition in front of a consumer, right? To differentiate yourself from the, the agent that sits down the hall from you at the same brokerage. Although I guess we're not all sitting down the hall from each other these days. Um, but especially when it comes to marketing and your brand differentiation in the digital space, right? Like how do you, how do you, tell, how do you tell a consumer who you are and what you stand for? How are you different? That's you know? it. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, it's really hard to differentiate yourself in the market um, when, you know, we're going to kind of, the the structure of what we're hoping to talk about today is a little bit about how things are done and why intentional marketing is different, right? But then also sort of these five things that you can be taking with you today um, in terms of rethinking. And the first thing that we're going to talk about about the five things we're going to start with it now because everything stems back to it. And that is know thyself. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Deb talks about this, Deborah talks about this in her book, um, you know, and does the value work. And we're going to drop a link to that book there because it actually gives you practical exercises of knowing thyself. But Mm -hmm. we live in a society where everybody is always looking out Um, and building businesses based on out, right? And so the difference of being intentional about your business and your brand is about looking in and how does the brand reflect? Um, I think it's a little easier for the real estate world, right? Because you are a brand of one in a lot of times. Um, but, But if you are a brokerage, like how does that brand, that company that you're building truly reflect the reason why you started it in the beginning? Yeah. Right. And the, the more aligned and integrated yourself is in the business, that's where authentic, authenticity starts to flow. And then all of these things that we hear, like, um, you know, as buzzwords or whatever about, you know, like your brand should be authentic and your authentic voice and all of these things. And people are like, I don't know what that means. If it, you don't know what that means, it's probably because you haven't done the foundational work of knowing thyself and making sure that that pillar is absolutely um, locked down and that you, you know what it is, who you're serving, why you're doing it, and then the intent, the, the, um, the reason why you started in the beginning. 
And I don't know, I know you've got lots of, to add into that core value of know thyself first, but let's just dig into that a little bit because it's so critical, Heather. Yeah, absolutely. And I think if you start with the why, that might be the easiest thing, right? Because everyone has their origin story of how they got into this business and what propelled you to want to open open your own brand, right? Open your own business to, to hang a shingle out and try to help people. And everyone's story is a little bit different. And I think having that as the starting point might be um, the simplest jumping off point, right? Because if you think about why you got started, then that helps you figure out what you want to say about who you are, right? So it's putting putting that stake in the ground of this is me, right? This is what I'm, this is what I have to offer. I mean, you know, Molly, maybe the talking about brand archetypes a little bit might be helpful for this crew. You know, there's there's different ways that you view yourself. And I think like looking through the brand archetype list, Matt, Molly, you can probably help me articulate all of them, but do you consider yourself um, a magician? Like, are you creating experiences for your clients? And that's what you're really good at. Are you um, the hero? Like, are you handling everything in such a way that they don't have to worry about a thing? So, you know, figuring out like, where do you fit, right? What type of, you're a service provider, right? So what type, where do you, you know, where do you fit in this, in the grand scheme of things? And then I think to me, like, it's much easier to talk to a consumer when, you know, when you have that foundation of, of knowing where, why you're there to help them, right? Where are you, where are you bringing, where are you coming to? Help me yeah. with the, help me with the archetypes, Molly, because I'm yeah. well, blanking so on a couple ones. Yeah, no, that's great. So archetypes, you know, again, what is an archetype, right? It's one of those things where people, we've heard that word, but maybe we don't fully understand what an archetype is. So uh, the definition of, a, of an archetype is, um, oh, I'm, I hear, I see the thing about my light. I know, I don't know what, I do not know why I do that. Like, it's this weird thing that happens. So I for, forgive me with that light. I don't know. It's super weird. Um, so let me try to, this out. Sorry about that, guys, with the light. It's always a thing. Oh, there we go. There you go. Whoosh. That's better. Thank you, Peggy, for that. Um, <laughs> so an archetype is an unconscious energy, a collective energy that exists. And Carl Jung um, is one of the forefathers of psychology who has defined and gone really, really um, deep into the study and the psychology of archetypes. As branders and marketers, it's really, really critical to understand these collective energies that exist because it helps create sort of um, understanding of um, common uh, collective energies that exist within everything, right? Mm -hmm. And what is marketing, right? Marketing is we are trying to um, create conversations um, that result in desired action, right? That is the idea of what marketing does, right? We, we, sometimes we make it more difficult than it is, but the, the truth of the matter is marketing is a series of conversations that drive somebody into a desired path, right, um, of action. For our real estate agents, obviously, that's to create prospects into clients. You know, um, for for us, we build tech companies. It's you know, what does that look like? Moving someone into different series of of um, action. Now, archetypes. Um, there are twelve defined by Carl Jung, and I can put a, um, a link um, here in a moment when Heather's talking. Um, that <laughs> sort of define them, and each archetype has both positive attributes and also negative attributes. So when they're in their fullness, you know, this is how they're presented. And when fear is present, this is how they're presented. And when we understand how these collective energies work together, we're able to say, okay, so if, we, if we're working with the magician, for example, the, um, and the magician is the archetypal brand, this is how it's presented in the highest form. And, you know, when it's not, you know, it can be dark and mysterious and um, uncertain, right? Mm -hmm. There are four archetypes that I'd like to address. Um, and that is defined by Carolyn Miss in her book, Sacred Contracts. 
um, which is another really great book to read. But it is the, the child, the saboteur, the victim and the prostitute. And I'm not talking about the streetwalker prostitute. I'm talking about the, the, the prostitute as the, the selling ourselves, right? And at what point do we start to sell or sell our brand and ourselves for, for money? And the biggest difference I think in intentional marketing and intentional branding is understanding where you could potentially lose a piece of your highest self for cash, right? And in business, for some reason, you know, for the sake of winning or for the sake of cash or for the sake of whatever it is, we all have a price. And that prostitute archetype allows us to understand when we're working, um, you know, whether we're, you know, selling out essentially or not. But the reason why these are really important for branding is because this is, again, we all as humans, it's part of our collective unconscious, right? This stuff happens always underneath the surface. It's a wave. And when we have that kind of knowledge about how we respond and react to things, it actually um, gives us that neutrality of like, oh, okay, I'm not just responding here, but that this is sort of what happens. And it almost gives us like a superpower lens of how to create um, based on what we know what's going to happen based on, on themes is really the right way, right way to look at it. Mm-hmm. So psychology and understanding what drives human behavior and a deep, profound understanding of this is another part of intentional marketing. Um, so am I broken? Are you paused, Heather, or am I? Can you guys hear me? I don't know if we've lost her or not, um, or if it's me. Deb? Okay, can you, are you there? Was that me or oh, was that you? I don't, I don't know which one of us it was. I, it froze up. I think it might've been on my side. So I'm going to apologize on that because I just got a message that my connection was unstable. Sorry, oh, guys. good. Well, this is the COVID, COVID one. <laughs> Making so, lemonade, right? Well, one of the things too. So Carl Jung is a book that you should read, right? The mm-hmm. Architects of the Collective Unconscious. It's a, it's a heady one, but it's good. Um, Carol Misses um, Sacred Contracts is another one that defines. And then I work with these archetypes guidebook, um, which is a really cool little book that that talks about all of these different um, archetypes that exist um, that really sort of help understand how things work and function. So I think it's a jumping off point too. like if you look at some of these um, brands, some of the brands that identify with the different archetypes, it's easy for you to see yourself in them. Yes. If, you're, if you're at a starting point where you're really trying to figure out like, where am I, you know, where am I coming from? Like, what, what type am I, you know, if you look at the her- typical hero brands like Nike or, or BMW, right? The magician brands like Disney and Apple, you know, like, yes. so where do you, where do you fall? Explore archetypes, risk, travel, discovery. So you're talking about Red Bull and Jeep and like, so where do, it's, pre, I think it's probably pretty easy for, for people to figure out like, well, where do I fall? Right. Yeah. And then that helps inform the types of conversations that you want to have with your consumer base. Right. So it's not, it's not difficult. I think I saw a question pop up somewhere. Like, how can you make sure that you're sincere? It's by speaking with your own authentic voice about things that you're passionate about. Right. So, you know, figuring out the, the know thyself and the archetype and your, in your jumping off point lets you um, figure out what kind of conversation, what kind of help you want to provide for the consumer. Right. And Molly, I yeah. know you wanted, you wanted to touch on the, the long-term conversation part. Yeah, so this is- too. Like, I don't want to miss including that part. Yeah, I mean, I think that's it, right? It is, you know, again, going back to, you know, I had kind of a moment, like I said, I mean, I've built a lot of brands and I've been around a lot of tables and have been around a lot of tables where I didn't like the conversations that were being had. And when I say that, it means- I mean that the conversations were about outwitting or, or trapping customers or, you know, there was just a weird moment that it was like, wait a minute, a business does not exist without its customers, right? Like we're, the entire purpose of a business is to serve 
a customer. And if the customers aren't willing to pay for something, then forget about it, right? Um, you don't have a viable business. Mm -hmm. And so leading with the idea that your business exists to serve someone. Your business is not a business unless you have someone who is willing to pay for your services. Changes that even just the way we think about what we're doing. It's easy to kind of get into the, the race of, 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 of to-dos, right? And mm -hmm. then we sort of forget that, hey, wait a minute, like I'm actually in business. The root of why this business even exists is to serve, mm -hmm. right? Now, the reason why that's important is because you can serve for a moment, right? Or you can serve for a lifetime. And the other difference with intentional marketing is the understanding, and this is where I think Heather and I come together from our backgrounds of PR, right? And understanding the power of third-party validation mm -hmm. is that we want to have long-term conversations with our customers. So when you are looking at a long-term plan and path, it's much easier to say that we're not going to give ourselves permission to treat people badly in the short term because we know we're playing a long game. And a lot of digital marketing techniques and tactics are, are about playing the short game, if you will. And it's sometimes sacrificing that big idea of service to the customer because we start to look at an email campaign or an ad campaign as a series of clicks and conversions and not remembering that a click and a conversion is that a person on the other side of that campaign is actually doing that thing, right? That we've asked them to do. And so remembering how important you know, having a long-term conversation is earning the right to be a part of the conversation at every step of the, of the relationship is really, um, you know, as marketers, we call that understanding the digital journey, right? But really mapping out, like having a right conversation at the right moment um, and making sure that you're delivering the right level of service and value. Um, so I think that's what you were talking yeah. about there, Heather. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, in real estate, we all we all work on building that book of business, right? That long term um, client list, our family of of um, consumers that we've worked with, and we want them to come back to us for advice, and we want them to come back to us when they are ready to make a move. But they, the other piece is that we want them to share our name when they're talking to somebody else that needs help, right? So, the long term the long-term conversation, the relationship building, I mean, this is, this is second nature to, to our real estate folks, right? You, you know, the, it's a, it's a relationship business. So I think from the standpoint, you know, for me with intentional marketing, I think being able to know your own story and tell your own story and knowing who you're talking to means that those those people that that hear your voice, that hear your story, that connect with you in some way, are you're going to pull towards you the people that are the right ones for you to work with, because they're the ones that your um, your story and your messaging and your brand are going to resonate with. You know, I, I've like I said, I've had my real estate license since 2004. It's still active. I have a, a broker's license too and a real estate team running in in the background. I don't work with clients face to face anymore, but years of doing um, content and outreach and brand building, what I found from that is that the people that reach out, raise their hand, right? Click on the link in the, in the email message that goes out or, you know, fill out a contact form on the website are the ones that connect with the message that I'm putting out there, the brand that I'm putting out there, the core values that I stand for that comes through in the messaging, right? So it actually will draw to you the type of people that, um, that you're going to work well with, you know, and then you're going to be able to have that long-term conversation with because they respect what you have to say. It resonates for them. Um, and there's the connection there. I think there's the, the authenticity and the, and the genuine connection comes from um, being yourself and being true to yourself and having that come through in um, your marketing and your messaging. Yeah. And, and part of this movement or this message too, is this idea that, your heart is not soft, 
right? And actually the data supports now that we make decisions based on emotion. That's how we are hardwired as human beings. And so for the last 10 years or so in marketing, the name of the game has always been about data-driven, data-driven, blah, 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 you know? And so we're making these decisions and I am a believer in data, but I'm also a believer in my own data. And that is my intuition and experience, right? Of having been and done um, it before. And I think part of the, the difference with building an intentional brand is knowing again that your intuition, right, and leading with heart is not soft. It's actually good business. And that is the stuff that is going to connect and draw people to you. The other part of that is creating those remarkable customer experiences, right? And yes. Right now we are, um, which is our second, you know, five things that you can do today is mm -hmm. really assess the type of experience that you are creating for your clients and for your prospects and taking a really hard look at that. Right. So one of the, um, you know, yamas and niyamas of yoga, I saw that we had a couple of yogis responding in there. So I love that. So yamas and niyamas are the gates um, of if you will, the, the foundation for, um, you know, morals and ethics um, in any kind of um, spiritual practice. One of them is to self-study. And that is really applicable to business because we should always be taking a microscope and a magnifying glass at what we're doing and whether or not it's working and whether or not it's aligned with the values. Always. This should be something that we're always inventorying and that it's not just something that we do every 10 years or whatever, because it's really easy to start walking on a path. And the next thing you know, you have this business that's built and moving around you that looks nothing at all like anything that you ever wanted to be a part of. And one of the reasons why being intentional about it is that you're making and always having that in that introspection and that evaluation as part of your, your planning and your process so that you can know exactly where you're going and why you're going. And then your decision-making isn't reactive, but it's intentional. Yeah. But creating these customer experiences, right, is really, really important because that is how we create that hormone loop of happiness and that creates the loyalty needed. And so it's, how are you making, you know, your people feel everyone I'm sure has heard the Maya Angelou quote about, it's not what you say and do. It's how you, you know, she says, it's not what you say and do. It's how you make me feel. That's what, that mm -hmm. is what um, is remembered. Um, and I think one of the things that Heather and I love to do together that has been super, super effective is how do you create these experiences um, for people? We like to deliver something, you know, especially in COVID to somebody's doorstep, right? Um, it comes in a box or whatever. And like, how do you create this moment? And we call that surprise and delight. And that's not a term that we own, um, but why don't you talk a little bit about that, Heather? Yeah, I mean, I think there's, there's an attention to detail in knowing your, um knowing your consumer, right? And staying in touch and making sure that you're smoothing the path in front of them. You know, if it's, a, we can talk about it from the standpoint of in transaction and the things that you do when you're actively working with a client through the sale of their house or the purchase of another one and taking a look at each one of those touch points, right? So, so creating an experience can be experiential like the magic box that shows up on the front porch with, you know, a homemade hot chocolate mix in it or, um, you know, a candle and um, something for them to help with the manifestation. Or it can mean looking at the process of how do you do your outreach when you're working with a seller to make sure that you're staying in touch with them on a weekly basis in a way that they feel heard, special, attended to, and that all of their needs are being met before they even think about the need that they have in front of them. So, you know, creating those experiences can mean taking a sweep through your, the way that the email content that you're sending to them post contract, like, okay, here's what's happening. Here's what's to expect next and delivering it in a kind of an unexpected way, you know, but I think in, from my background and experience, the, for, if you're two steps ahead of what your client needs, then the experience for them is going to be special. And then when you start inserting um, curated experiences of, you know, pop buys or 
handwritten cards or things like that, then, you know, to your point, Molly, that good, that goodness loop of like, this person cares about me because you do, right? The, those are your people. And it's, it's all about how do you, how do you love them? How do you show your love towards them so that you have that long-term relationship? Well, and I love that you're using that language, right? Like, how do you love your people? And, you know, in the past, like when we would speak up and say these things, you know, people look at us like, you're crazy. These are our customers. We don't know them. You know, why would we love them? But again, the truth of the matter is, you know, I believe the next generation of business is where that line of professional and personal connection is blurred. And part of that is because we actually can have one-to-one conversations with our people. Yeah. You know, sure. and, you know, it kind of harkens back to the good old days, right? So let's sort of do a quick little history of branding, right? Back in the old fashioned days. And this was identified by Douglas Rushkoff in his book called um, Life Incorporated. Um, but he talks about the Quaker Oats. So back in the day, you know, mm-hmm. you would have a small village, you'd walk and you'd get your oats by the Quaker and you'd go up to his front to say good morning, you know, and he'd give you your, your oats. You had a personal relationship with him you know, and that's, you would feed your family. So if you got a bad batch of oats, you knew exactly where to go, right? And you trusted the fact that this, the miller or the, the, the guy would give you, you know, good product. Well, as businesses expanded and expanded and we started to outsource all of these things. And so we no longer had a direct connection and relationship to the actual person who sowed and farmed the oats, right? Mm-hmm. They placed the face of the Quaker on the, the oatmeal box to serve as that stakeholder and that emotional connection to a person that you could trust, right? That's why a lot of brands, um, you know, have a an, uh, character, if you will, right? Um, so because we never would ever know where our, our oats were actually coming from. And so there, the body and the brand was sort of working as a, as a placeholder, if you will, to create that trust instead of the person. But now as marketers, right, we can have one-to-one conversations with people through social media and through marketing tools. We can see exactly when someone is consuming, you know, this piece of content or if they've opened their email and what they've clicked on. And we can actually say, okay, we can reach out to this person because they're clicking on these things. So we know they must be interested in that. And we can actually engage with them in a one-to-one or at least in a way where we actually understand their behaviors, right? Mm -hmm. And that is again, the technology of marketing sort of bringing us back almost, if you will, full service, full circle to that Mm -hmm. one-to-one connection of actually knowing that person, um, or at least knowing the the archetype of the person, right? Or their general behaviors, um, which is a really cool thing. And as for the agents out there, and you know, you have that direct connection to your people still. And if you're paying attention and if you're listening and present, you know, you have that ability to create that, you know, that I see you and hear you moment in every single interaction that you do. The problem is we start to get busy, right? And then we start to get into a checklist modality where we're doing things because we think we should. And not because we actually care about the action and all of those things that you are doing right now, whether it's like, Oh, I've got to do this, this, and this, and you're not necessarily remembering why you're doing it. I would put that on a spreadsheet and just assess, does this really work? Is this really worth my time? Is this genuinely connecting with anybody on a human level? And if not ditch it, how can you replace that for a really personal, you know, one-to-one conversation, because those are the things that are are going to actually drive your business. Two examples of that in action is one at the very beginning of COVID, Shelly Zavitz, who is a friend of mine, called and said, look, all of my people are really stressed, stressed out right now. I want to do something for them, right? So we have candles that she live um, home candles. So she wrote this really cool little note basically saying, hey, you know, I'm a light for you right now you know, we're, we're in this together and just send a candle and like 80% of the people reached out to her and basically said, you're so thoughtful. Yes. Right. And she got back into flow. Mm -hmm. Tracy Freeman did something similar. She was at the dollar store and saw these boxes of Calgon. Right. And she was like, Calgon, I don't know what I'm going to do with this, but I, 
I know I want to do something with this. Right. So, you know, she called and said, Hey, I've got these boxes of cow, 40 boxes of cow gone sitting on my front porch. What can I do with them? I'm like, well, what was your intent? Well, I wanted people to like, you know, feel like they can rest or, you know, be taken away. And so we created a tote and chocolate with the cow gone with a really sweet message about, look, we all need that, you know, a moment to relax or whatever it is. And so, you know, I'm here, you know, I forget exactly what the message was. hundred percent people got back into flow with her, you know, because it's different and yep. it's not just a standard pop by that's generic. It's that the element of seeing people, um, yeah. that is absolutely, um, what it is, you know, my advice to you, and I think this is the differentiator for people who are really thriving in their businesses is when you have those sort of weird ideas to do it, to listen to it. Embrace Don't just, it. Yeah. 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 When that person pops in your mind, reach out to them, right? Don't dismiss it. And we are in a very dismissive m- mindset right now. But I think that that's the magic is where you actually say, you know, someone pops into your mind, reach out and say, hey, just popped into my mind. You know, how can I, what, how can I help you? Yeah, I think in, you know, in real estate, especially, we have this tendency to spaghetti market, you know, like throw the spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks because you feel like you have to do something, right? And, you know, you sit in front of a blinking cursor and wonder what you're supposed to be saying. And, you know, moving into into a more intentional way of communicating with your with your client base means being real, you know, not just doing something because you feel like you have two hours of prospecting in the morning and time to fill and, you know, you got to do something. It's, it's actually making room to be creative, um, and be true to, um, the way that you want to, the way that you want to talk to these, to your client base or your potential client base. Right. And I know Molly, one of the things that we had, kind of talked about in our pre-call was about making time for that creativity. Right. And, you know, it, the hard thing is the, is the grind in real estate, feeling like you have to be productive, that you're always doing something. You're always hunting for the next piece of business. or you're trying to close the stuff that you have in front of you. I think one of the things that, that I lean on the most on your, on your action list of things to do is, is marking the time off the calendar to give yourself room to um, be in your business with your creativity, right? And taking a breath and remembering why you're doing what you're doing and who you're doing it for um, and and who your, who your consumers are, right? So that you can, um, so you can have those, those moments where the, the Calgon inspiration comes and, and you land these lovely gifts on someone's doorstep to let them know that they matter to you. That's it. Right. And when we're always heads down in our business, we're never heads up. And inspiration strikes when we are in spirit. That's the root of the word, right? And the only way to create our, that inspiration and the innovation, which is so important for thriving businesses, is when we slow all the way down, right? That's why so many of us get our best ideas when we're driving to work or when I we're in the up. shower, right? It's because yeah, yeah. those are the moments where you're not doing, And as business people, I would say if there's one major adjustment that you can make in the next year is to build in time for quiet. I've been writing a book, The Intentional Business, um, for four years now, and I haven't been able to crank it out. I was just, I was truly grinding, right? Now there is something about grinding, right? Because that is how a pearl is actually produced is one time when we're working with the grit. So we do need that in our lives. I don't want to under understate that importance because there are, that is purposeful as well. But I actually had to take myself out of my life and I went away and by myself and I have three teenagers, right? So it wasn't easy to do, but I left my life and locked myself in a cabin and I was able to finally crank out the book. And in that process, it, it confirmed to me that while we're constantly in this mode of hustle, hustle, grind, 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 we're actually not able to allow that better part of our brain or the better part of ourselves come forth. And Mm -hmm. that to me is the essence of an intentional business versus just a a business is, is our highest self 
represented? Is our highest self at the table? Is our highest self creating? Or are we just reacting? And empowering yourself um, to know that, that creating space is actually propelling your business to the next higher state rather than being unproductive. And this is the analogy, it's like the tea culture versus the coffee culture. And um, it's really, really important to understand the difference. Coffee culture is caffeinated and it's go, go, go. You grind your beans, you know, you grind them all up and then you, you know, you're out there. With a tea culture, it's a slow steep, right? We sip and there's a beautiful saying that I absolutely love. And it's the first cup of tea we meet as strangers. The second cup of tea we meet as friends and the third cup of tea we meet as family. And if we take that approach of allowing things to steep and having that, or even employing the tradition, the ritual of afternoon tea, where you use that four o'clock time to sit, to think, to process, just to steep and to think, what kind of, how is that going to affect your business? The last thing we want to talk about too, before we run out of time is goodness loops. And I know you mentioned it, Heather, but why don't you start off, kick us off about what is a goodness loop and, and how does someone employ it in their business? Well, you know, I think the, the, the goodness loop, you were the first person that I ever heard use the term goodness loops. And it just like talks to my heart. It's, it's how do you, how do you give back with your business, right? Where can you, where can you bring things full circle? Um, you know, doing, doing good is good business, right? So how do you, how do you look into, um, what you have available to you and the business that you're running and how do you, how do you utilize what you have to give back to your community as, as real estate agents in particular, we are embedded in our communities. We have to know um, very deeply what is, what is happening. What are the worries of the people that live here? Where are things going? What's happening? So, you know, the opportunity to then be present and, um, productive in some way within our own communities. I think we're, it's, I, sorry, I'm like totally passionate about it, but like, how do you, (laughs) how do you leave your imprint um, with the things that you're doing in the community around you? We have such a great um, springboard as, as real estate agents to be part of people's lives and part of their community. So I think making the goodness loops part of your um, intention is, uh, I mean, that's, that's kind of a no brainer to me. Yeah. And we can be really intentional about which, which loops are the right ones for our business. Um, Mm -hmm. And that can either be because it's aligned with our passion, right? Our personal passion, which means that we're going to give it the long haul because we actually care, right? Another way we can define what, where the business should, where the goodness loop is understanding where your business is taking more than it's giving back. Right. Mm -hmm. So for example, with the tea business intentionalities, we actually have boxes, we have packaging, you know, and so one of the reasons and one of the things that we're doing with our goodness, goodness loop is we're giving back to trees. So we decided that, you know, we know that our business is consuming. um, And so how do we, we, so making sure that we give back and um, give profit to replanting trees. Um, each of the tea blends has its own, um, different goodness loop based on alignment with, um, you know, different, um, charities that we care about. But one of the things is like, as for brokerages, you know, is your, is your building that you occupy that space in your community? Is, is there an opportunity for it to, for that to be put into use for the community? Cause it's something that you can open up for nonprofits. Um, is there, you know, I used to have a company called Happy Kins where we made cloth napkins for kids. And part of the, the, um, the fabric, the way that it was cut, there was a selvage, right? So with these selvage, we had all these stacks of, of fabric strap, scraps, right? Which wasn't environmentally friendly. And we were a napkin company to like support the environment, right? And so one of the things that goodness loop was we gave these scraps to the women who are making the napkins so that they could then weave them into placemats and fabric bowls and rugs, and then use that and sell those products for their children so that their children had an opportunity for a better life in the future, right? So we had no scraps and our the people who were making our products had something to give. So their heart was more invested because 
it was creating right living and something for to better for their children. So it's like, where, where's your business taking more than it's giving back. And those are your opportunities to find those connections that are really going to be integrated into your vision and purpose. So Yay. Oh, like magic back. <laughs> I magically, I automatically appeared at, we have 10 minutes until the top of the hour ladies. Oh my goodness. The, the chat was on fire today. So like just they're soaking in your wisdom and all of your ideas. There were a couple of questions. I know that you got a couple of them along the way, but I do want to revisit a couple of them and then also recap those five things. So let's, let's start at, at the last, let's start with recapping the five things that everyone who is here with us today can do to become more intentional. Start Heather, you go for it. <laughs> okay, well, number, number one, number one, highest and best for me, know yourself, know yourself first. Start from your own core value exercise, your archetype exercise, whatever, whatever sounded good to you in that, but start from who you are and what you're bringing to the table. That's awesome. Number one. And number two, customer experiences. You know, what are you delivering and how is that packaged? And what is the emotion that awe, that, you know, they see me moment that you're creating for your people? And do you have enough of those to create that loyalty that's needed to break through the, the clutter? And third would be your, um, your creative time, whether that is tea time at four o'clock and letting it steep or carving out um, a retreat uh, space for you to be uh, by yourself and alone and creative, whatever that looks like for you, put yourself in the zone of being able to be fully present uh, in your own spirit uh, to pull some inspiration. Love that. And then I'm going to say, focus on the one-to-one conversations that humanity mm -hmm. has to come forth. We're not talking about ones and zeros on the other end of any kind of campaign that we ever do in branding and marketing. It's a human being that is doing the thing that you're asking them to do. And so remember always that humanity has to come forth in everything that you're doing from words to the look, to the feel, to everything. So focus on that one-to-one. -one. And of course, last topic that gets me jumping up and down the goodness loops, right? <laughs> how do you give back? How do you, how do you go forth into your community and, and leave your imprint on, uh, in, in your legacy? That's it. I love that. I love all five. And I dropped this in the notes as well. We will make sure to recap that in the, in the notes that we'll share with the recording. So yes, everyone who has been like, I wanna watch this again and again and again, you will have that opportunity. And if you are w listening to this after the fact, you're listening to it for the second or third or 10th time. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one of the questions that came through from Alex too, who is another amazing uh, mm -hmm. woman, a woman in our community, she is a leader. She's been on our stage. She's actually teaching our course next week, having a great conversation mm -hmm. with Dottie yeah. Herman. Oh, sweet. We'll definitely tune into that. Yeah, that's all on leveling nice. up your negotiation. Yeah, so much fun. That's going to be great. Yep. She actually was asking, what are some companies in our space, in real estate, that you believe have a clear brand and intention? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to speak for Rate My Agent because that's the reason why I'm working there, right? I mean, the intent is to basically allow agents to do the thing that they're best at and that's serving their clients. And so many times, um, you know, that is something that every day when we have, a, you know, when we have our meetings, it's like, what, you know, how are we serving the agent so that they can um, not only so that we can celebrate that hard work through the reviews, but allow them to focus on what they do best and that's serving their client well. And that's the whole essence of that undisruptible campaign is showing up and seeing and spotlighting up. Oh, oh, there you go. Yeah. Nice. Very nice. <laughs> yeah. And, and actually any agent, every agent, you know, rate my agent does have free profiles um, so that you can collect and aggregate reviews on the prof on um, the platform. Yeah. Um, and the, the, the business model is actually based on subscription. So um, that, you know, that's the reason why for me, like um, I, I love that company. They know who they are and they know who they're serving. So that's, that's what it's all about. I love that. And I know that um, as brokers and as the individual agents, regardless of what your role is in the industry, 
there are resources for you through Rate My Agent, ways that you can help your, your agents do it, ways that you help agents actually help to tell their story through those. So we'll make sure to get uh, some links to that as well. Um, how about you, Heather? Who, who's a standout for you? Well, you know, I have to I have to go back to my heart and talk about Century 21 Redwood, who I've been with for, I think, yes, today. Is it today is my 12 year anniversary of having my license hung with them. So kind of kind awesome. of a good day, um, coincidentally. But, you know, when I was um, on the exec team with them, we went through an entire um, focus group around what the company mission statement um, was. And so we really put us put a flag in the ground on, on what it meant to be part of Century 21 Redwood. And what came out of that exercise was um, a company mission statement that talked about um, empowering agents to, um, to reach consumers and, and do good in the world and make the world a better place. Redwood does tons of things. Uh, Redwood gives back. Charity does tons of things like building houses in Haiti and huge Toys for Tots things. So being part of... Um, something bigger, right? And being able to articulate that story. So any messaging that that came out of Redwood beyond that that exercise, it, it's like when you when you know your mission and you know who you are, you have that north star to guide you on all of your all of your steps from that point forward. So I, I like to I like to brag on them a little bit because I think they're doing it right. Yeah. Well, I th- yep. Well, Deborah, I just want to say, you know, Heather and I just concluded a project to, well, not concluded, but we're doing a project with Revaluate. And that, and this is another great example is when Chris mm-hmm. Strayer, he's the CEO of the company, you know, we were kind of talking about like, why did, why you and why, why Revaluate? Like, why? And, um, <laughs> like, why? Right? What's why? the story? What's yeah, your what's story? story? Yeah, yeah. Like, and he just, he's launching a new product called Reside. Um, it's you basically using artificial intelligence to see who, in a geography, um, you know, is a likely mover essentially. But when he started talking about what he cared about personally, like, he's like, I, you know, I don't want data and there should be data integrity so that we aren't steering and redlining, you know, and that's the thing that was passionate about him. I'm like, well, that's nowhere in your messaging. So he's starting to pull that thing that, that, that was kind of hidden and buried, but it's his driver. That's mm-hmm. the thing that actually is going to connect and magnetize the people to him and to mm-hmm. reevaluate, right? Who, yeah. who also say, yeah, I need to know who the likely movers are, but I also yeah. want to make sure that I'm working with a company that has data integrity and responsibility yeah. so that I know that I'm not contributing to a bigger problem. So he actually has a story, I think that came out in Inman today about that, mm-hmm. Um, which is really interesting, but that's, that's a great example of somebody finding their voice or aligning their passion and with maybe even their purpose on this planet. Right. And their business is the vehicle for him to have that conversation and to communicate that to others. Um, I think that's a great example. Absolutely. And I, I, I dropped this into the chat when that question came around. And I think that it's important because it we're, we are talking about brokerages, we're talking about RE tech companies, we're talking about all of the areas that serve real estate. And, you know, Woman Up took some time to kind of get in the flow of that as well, right? When, when your people are asking you the same questions over and over and over again about your brand, I think that's a great red flag for you. That's a good trigger to say, clearly I'm not being clear enough. Yeah. And <laughs> right. So if you feel like people are like, what is it that you do? Or what is your niche? Or what is, what is a fill in the blank? That's a great opportunity to kind of hop into what both Molly and Heather have talked about today, which is, you know, take, schedule some time to get creative and let that flow out of you right? Take a pen and a piece of paper and write out what is important to you, why you got into this business, why you focus on, uh, you know, the consumer that you focus on. What, what are those things, you know, I call it your soul time, your soul tank and filling it. How can you include all of those things inside here? Because I think over and over and over again, we hear how, how do we become, how do we actually show sincerity? How do we live authentically. And I, a big part of that, and Heather, I know that you, you talked about this too, is you have to know who you are. If you don't know who you are and what, and really 
I mean, your brand is living and breathing, right? If you don't know who your brand is either, if you don't know who that avatar, that archetype type is, it's very difficult. Yeah. So you, you two have given us so much to think about. I know that we're going to include all of the links that we talked about today um, uh, together. And the two of you talked about before we are also, we have also gotten some requests for a book recommendation list from the two of you. So we will, um, we'll get some of those into the show notes as well. Uh, community, you, those of you who are passionate about this and have read books that you recommend, we'd love to add those to the mm-hmm. list as well. That is the be- beauty of this community is that we all come together. Uh, I want to make sure that we help everyone here get in touch with you, keep connected with the two of you. So mm-hmm. Heather, let's start with you. What's the best way for people to connect with you? Um, probably the easiest way possible is to do a search for my name on LinkedIn and send me a request there, please. Would love to, um, to have, uh, have those connections there and be able to continue the conversation. Excellent. How about you, Molly? Yeah. So Facebook for me, um, probably the easiest way. Otherwise, um, you can email me molly at redtailcreative.com. And, um, you know, I do want to say in terms of a book, I am launching a book in January called The Intentional Business, A Path to Purpose and Prosperity, where I am applying all of the, the spiritual research and context that I've had over the last 20 years, um, basically into a book or a, a roadmap for a, a, the way business can be that really aligns with our highest good. Well, and I I can speak for the entire community when we say we will come around you when that is happening. So as soon as that book has life and it is, we can hold it, we will definitely make sure everyone knows how to get in touch with you and get a copy of that for sure. All right, ladies, as we close up, any last words of wisdom that you want to speak over and into the community as they're all waving hello and goodbye to you in the chat? I would just say, don't be afraid to get started. Don't be afraid to be yourself and to have your voice uh, be out there. Your, um, your unique take on the universe is what will draw people to you. So don't, don't keep your light under a bushel basket, let it shine. Oh, that's beautiful. I love it. You know, and for me, I'm going to say it's time to remember. And when I say remember, I say re- member and that is integrating your soul with your body and your business and not being afraid to have that depth into the business and allow that business to reflect why you're even here in the beginning. Um, You know, we have uh, such limited time on the planet. So um, our business, because our businesses can be a vehicle for, um, for building that life that we, we can only imagine. I love it. Thank you both so very much for being here with us today. Again, I I have gotten as many of the questions that I could into the show notes. So we make sure to get you everything that you asked for. And as soon as the replay is ready for all of you, we will make sure that you first you get the link first. You will you will <laughs> receive it in your email. So thank you for registering. Thank you for being here. Thank you for showing up and, and letting wisdom pour into you because that is really the first step is being open to learning more. So thank you, everyone. Have a great rest of your week. Uh, we'll see you here next week on uh, Wednesday with Alex Chu and Dottie Herman uh, talking about negotiating. So if you don't have that on your calendar, get it on your calendar. Hop on over to IamWomanUp.com slash wisdom series to register for that. Have a good one, everyone. Thanks so much for being here. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.